In this video, we look at uh, how we can visualize and analyze uh, some sounds of animal vocalizations using the software Prat. I start from this article that you can find on some Moodle, but you can also download from the internet, which is the article on which we base our study today. So this is a study of uh, vocalization of uh, the goitred gazelle, gazelle subcuturosa. And uh, I chose this article because you can download the, the sound data from the article, from the supplementary material of the article. I scroll to the bottom here, which is uh, actually some recording of the vocalizations, which I save on my computer now. I save on this folder that is on my desktop here. Actually, I've already it saved as uh, nasal codes and oral codes of these gazettes. And um, this is the main file that we can analyze with Pratt. Now I go and open Prat on my computer. It opens with these two uh, windows, one for the picture windows and one for the Prat objects. And this is where we can uh, open a file or uh, record the sound or again compose a sound from pure tones. Let's start from something simpler, simple, su such a pure tone sound in which it's just a single frequency, a single sine wave. I call this, uh, I, I make uh, for a couple of seconds, let's say, and this is 440 hertz. Uh, yeah, the name is okay. Let's, let's run this, okay. So now I created the sound, which I can view and edit here. Uh, this is uh, on top of the screen, here I have the waveform and here I have the spectrogram, but we will come to the spectrogram later. Let me start by looking at this waveform. What I can do is that I can play the sound. So this is a single note, a single uh, tune. And I can also zoom in, you zoom to selection, and we see that this is a perfect sine wave. So, because this sound doesn't change in time, I can uh, plot the spectrum easily. But before I do this, I, I zoom back to uh, show the origin of the entire sound and uh, select the region on which I want to calculate the spectrum, which in this case is everything. If I have a larger region for a sound that is constant in time, I can only increase my uh, precision because I have a larger sample. So I go to spectrum and uh, view spectra slice. So this spectra slice is the spectrum of the sound. It is a plot of frequency on the x-axis and uh, power or uh, amplitude on, on the y-axis. I can play the sound here as well. And what I can do is that if I move the uh, mouse pointer, I can get the frequency where I am, and the uh, intensity in decibels. And I can see that this peak here is uh, around 440 Hz, which is where I created it. But I can zoom in by selecting a region, and then view uh, zoom to selection, for instance, so that I have a larger region. We can see clearly that there is only one peak, and this peak is at around 440 Hz, which is how, how we wanted it to be. Now let's try for a slightly more complex sound. In this case, I open a sound from a file, but I could also record a sound. So I could just record my own voice for a second. For it. Let's, let's do this. I start recording and I say a word, let's say last, so that I have a longer R. Last, save to list and close. And let's have a look at my voice here. For, a, for one second, you and edit. You see now that there is this uh, sound which is much more complex and uh, we can uh, zoom in. Here we can see that it repeats over a certain time and I can measure this time interval is 0 0.011 uh, one, uh, seconds. 
From this, I can calculate the frequency of my voice. Uh, for instance, I can, uh, I, if I know that this is 0 0.011, I can open a, a piece of software to, to run the calculation. And I know that the frequency is 1 over the period. So, uh, in this case, I, I open the R Studio console and I say 1 divided by 0 0.011154 which gives about 89 Hertz. So I'm uh, speaking with a low pitched voice in this case. And uh, another thing that I can do is that I could view, uh, zoom back uh, to show everything. I could try to calculate the spectrum. In this case, the sound changes over time because in the first part, la, la and then uh, the second part, Last. So let's just focus on this long uh, sound hmm? and plot the spectrum for this. So again, it's the spectral slice. I see that this spectrum has a series of peaks that we will come to later on. And I, what I can do is that I, I can zoom at the very uh, at the left of the spectrum, zoom to selection, and we see that there are a few peaks as well. And let's see where they are. In this case, they are, this is uh, 86, 173. Let's write this number. Hmm? I add C, 86, 173, 258, and then I have 345, 5, okay? And uh, let's take, take each number divided by uh, a multiple of 1, so 86 divided by 1, 173 divided by 2, and 258 divided by 3, 345 divided by 4, we see that, you see, all of these are multiples of, of about 86, which is not so dis distant from the number that I got before for frequency, which is 89. So these are all the harmonics of my voice. When my vocal cords vibrate, they will produce a, a vibration that has a main frequency of about 86 Hz or something similar, but they will also vibrate at multiples of this frequency, which are the harmonics. This is true for my voice, but it's also true for most musical instruments or most sound generating objects. Anything that vibrates usually produces harmonics. And the case that we have seen before with the single sine wave is extremely rare. Then um, this is uh, uh, when, when I look at the very low frequencies, okay, 100 hertz to uh, 200 hertz, and this, this window reaches up about 860 hertz. But if I look at the whole pattern, hmm, we see that there, are, there is another pattern which uh, has some broad peaks. In this case, there is a broad peak here around 3,700, another broad peak here at, at 5,700, then maybe another broad peak here. These are the formants of the sound, and they come from the fact that the, uh, the voice that is produced by the vocal cords goes through the vocal tract and is filtered in different ways to produce different, uh, different peaks in the spectrum, which, which are the formants. And these peaks correspond to the fact that in this case I was saying something that's similar to ah, ah, ah. Mm -hmm. So if I were uh, to see another word, say green, then uh, these formants would change while the fundamental frequency and the harmonics would probably remain the same. A way how I can change the fundamental frequency and the harmonic is by changing the pitch of my voice, which I could do if I were singing. Um, let's make another example. I close this window again and I open another sound. And in this case, I read one from file because I do not have a musical instrument with me. And um, 
high open sound, which is the um, uh, guitar string. Okay, you can add it. I display them multiple times. I can try to select a region and maybe play it. Okay. Let's zoom in in a smaller region. Again, view. Zoom to selection. And we start to see this repetition of the pattern. Zoom to selection again. We can see that it repeats. In this case, it is already too noisy. So let, let's uh, move back to uh, show and try maybe uh, closer to the beginning here. Zoom to selection. Okay, this is a bit, bit better. Zoom to selection again. And we see the repeating pattern again. This is the uh, length of the of the cycle you see that the pattern repeats after this interval even if it is not identical every time but it is very similar and it repeats itself so this uh, this length should correspond to the period of the sound and i already have the calculation here which is 110 hertz so this is the fifth string of a guitar which is uh, a note which has a frequency of 110 Hz. It, it probably, the, the, in terms of frequency, is not that different, different from my own voice, which was 86 Hz. But uh, if we want to uh, look more in detail at the spectrum of this sound, so I go back and uh, show all, and uh, let's take uh, just a part here, and let's see the spectrum slice again. I see these peaks again, uh, as, it, as before, but as you can see, the peaks just start from very high and then go down. There are in these secondary peaks, which are the formants. In this case, it is a single uh, object vibrating the string. And if I zoom uh, to this low frequency, I can see the same, that I have a peak at 109, roughly, then another one at 220, 330, and so on. So uh, you see that all these peaks are, are again multiples of 110. This is the fundamental frequency of the sound, is the, the vibrate corresponds to the frequency of vibration of the string, the main frequency of vibration. But the string is also vibrating uh, on multiples of this frequency, 220, 330. So all objects that produce sound will produce these harmonics that can help you find the fundamental frequency. You can look at the spectrum and find the peak, or you can look, as we have done before, at the period, uh, as we have done before here, at, at the distance between two peaks here, and uh, try to uh, get the inverse of this, one over the period, and it, this gives you the frequency. Of course, you need to be careful that you want to have this frequency in, in seconds, in order, so the period must be in seconds in order to have the frequency in hertz. Now, let's go ahead and open the sound that we wanted to read. You have two options here in the menu of Prat. You have to read from file and open long sound file. If, if a sound file is very long, then you could use this long sound file, which means that not all the sound is loaded in memory at once. But for, for what we do today, we can just read from file the entire sound. And I see like this one with the four nasal calls of the Goetred Gazelle. View and edit. And uh, so it is a very complex sound pattern, but let's listen to it before. Nozzle, calls. So you see that there, are, there is a human voice. And then... Uh, Oral calls. So, and, and then there are these calls of the, of the gazelle. Uh, let's just focus on one, and I suggest we focus on this last one, and zoom to the selection. 
insert it into selection. And we see that this is a call. Mm -hmm. The reason why I chose this call is because uh, even if they are already a bit complicated, they don't modulate too much over time. So the, the, the main the frequency and formants don't change much over time. And also there isn't much of what is called the vibrato, where the frequency goes up and down uh, constantly. So uh, we can do exactly the same analysis. The, the first thing that we, we can have a look at is the uh, fundamental frequency of this sound. And we can do it in two ways. We can just zoom in this region and try to look at the distance between two peaks here. Okay, so the distance is uh, a, about 8 milliseconds, which corresponds to 121 uh, hertz seconds per second. I can uh, check, if you prefer, 1 divided by 0 0.008214 and give 121 hertz. If this number was in milliseconds, if it was 8 milliseconds, then I would need to write 8, 1 divided, 8 times 10 to the minus 3. Because, uh, uh, because uh, you convert from uh, milliseconds to seconds. Okay? And you, you get uh, roughly the same. I didn't put the, the decimals in this case. And then uh, we can... Uh, zoom back I have the entire call you uh, this is a spectrogram which we are going to look at in, uh, in a moment uh, but I just wanted to see to show you that it, it, over time this is the time axis the spectrogram is quite constant hmm? so uh, remember this is the waveform you have time on the x-axis and you have pressure or uh, relative uh, amplitude on the, on the y-axis. This is the spectrogram. You have time on the x-axis and you have uh, frequency on the y-axis. And we'll come to the setting of this later. And you see that over time, so on the x-axis, it doesn't change much, particularly in this range here. So let's, look, let's focus on this range here. And because it doesn't change, I can plot the spectrum, so, which is called here the spectral slice. The spectrum uh, is a bit complicated. It has uh, a few broad peaks here and uh, many smaller peaks here. So I zoom on the left again, zoom to selection, and I can check for these smaller peaks. I, I, I see one, 126, then this 254, 382, and you can easily guess that these are the harmonics. So the fundamental frequency is 126, roughly that we saw before. And then we have harmonics that are multiples of uh, this number, 126, and so on. So you can get a good idea of the fundamental frequency of the sound. And uh, if I zoom uh, to show all of that again, I can also see these broad peaks, which are here at uh, 1,876, in this case, 2,800, uh, another one here at roughly 4,000 or close to. And these are the formants of the call, and they, these uh, formants will change depending on, uh, depending on, on the kind of call that th th this uh, gazelle is em emitting. I have a few settings here uh, in, for, to analyze this spectrogram. The first, uh, the first thing that I can notice here is that there, are, uh, there is a blue line already, which gives us the pitch or the fundamental frequency of the sound over time. In this case, you have the pitch on the right of the axis. In this case, it goes from 75 to 500. So you need to be sure that the, your scale is uh, adequate to 
represent the pitch of your sound. In this case, if I was, uh, say, using the sound of a bird that uh, sings at maybe uh, above 500 hertz, I would need to set a different scale. Okay, so I, go, I would go to the pitch settings and say that the scale should go up to maybe 2000 hertz. Okay. In this case, the pitch is very low, it's uh, still 120, in this case 122, 126. And uh, so, so the scale that I had before was okay. I can go back to 500. Okay. And then um, uh, on the left of the, of the graph, the scale gives me the frequency. Okay, so it, it is a bit confusing because you have a scale for the pitch that doesn't really match with the scale for the spectrogram that you have. In this spectrogram, we can see that we have uh, a peak here and then disappears and you have a main peak around 2000 uh, Hz, which uh, again, if I go back to what we had before with the spectrum, spectral slice, should correspond to what we had here. So, uh, in this case, uh, 1,900, so it should be this peak. The second peak here is 2,800. And if I go here, I, I find that roughly there is a peak uh, the, the same, uh, at the same place. And then there, I see that there is a third band of frequency here around 4,000. And if I went on the spectrum, I would see that there is a peak here on 4,000 hertz. So these are the formats of the sound. I can ask Pat uh, uh, to show these formats and to calculate these formats. In this case, they already went nicely uh, on the place where they were, what we guessed that they would be. But uh, I, otherwise, I would need to set how we calculate them, in particular, how many formats I want to be identified. If I put a different number here, I see that there are, I want four, I see four. If I put a bigger number, this can create problems and this uh, gives this two, which maybe is, exist, but maybe don't really exist. So I need to have the good settings for formats. And the other thing that I can do is that I can have a window length over which this is measured. In, in, instead of 0, 0, 0,01 seconds, I could have a slightly longer window and see what happens. Hmm. So in this case, they are calculated over, over a long, longer window of time. And this is still fine. The spectrogram itself uh, is plotted with some settings. So I can uh, go for the spectrogram and look for the spectrogram settings. This also relies on uh, a, a certain window length and a certain uh, range of uh, amplitude of the sound that uh, I uh, use for, uh, for plotting the spectrum. So let's change the window length first to much longer window. And you see that now they are uh, smoothed because now the temporal window uh, is uh, like smoothing over the temporal window over time. And you have much uh, longer uh, lines, streaks here. But in this case, because the sound is not changing much in time, this is still uh, fine and I still have a, a quite good result. But I, um, I put back the original setting, which I think was better. And of course, you can have this standardized, but they will be standardized for the human voice. So if we work with the animal calls, we probably don't want this to be the case. Another thing that you need to pay attention to is that you have the range of frequencies that you consider, in this case from 0 to 5000. We could try to plot the spectrogram for higher frequencies, say 10,000. In this case, there isn't much, uh, so uh, it is okay to plot just up to 5,000. But it, uh, you need to be a little bit careful about what you do because, uh, because the settings can really change the, the results. Sound, sounds are quite complicated to, to analyze because they change over time. They, 
everything can change. In this case, this is a simple sound, so it is quite easy, but otherwise everything can change. So I suggest that you can compare your results now with the results that the authors of the article have reported in the, their manuscript. Of course, uh, there will be differences because you only worked on a smaller data set, but uh, I think it is a good exercise if you can uh, uh, validate what you find on maybe one or two or three of these uh, codes that are available in the file uh, against the numbers that they report in the table one that uh, is visible here for the fundamental frequency and the position of the different formants. So this is a very tiny uh, sound analysis project, but uh, I think it gives you an idea of what it looks like. Unfortunately, for most animal vocalizations, we have sounds that change a lot more in time, so you would need to do a similar analysis uh, different time points or maybe you need to uh, uh, apply more complex tools to the analysis. But uh, this is not the purpose of our module, it is just to give you an idea of how this works.